so let's look at anatomy of the skull. So here we see the intact skull. We'll remove the manual. And hypothetically, the calvarium. All right, so here we go. Looking down into the skull now. So first, let's identify some basic bones of the skull here. All right, the frontal bone here, here, this bone, in essence, your forehead and the tops of your eye sockets. Now we have the inside view. So frontal bone, or here. Frontal bone. The frontal sinuses are hollow places in the bone. Now you can't see the frontal sinuses in the intact skull, nor can you see any of the sinus cavities in the intact skull. For any of the sinuses, the bones must be disarticulated so that you can see that hollow cavity. So frontal sinus. Parietal bones are these flat bones that make up the side of the head. Parietal bones. One on either side. You get the point. Parietal bone. Not much to it, not much feature, just makes up the lateral sides of the skull. The occipital bone. Is the bone in the back of the head? Take it out, it looks like this. Occipital bone. Now we have some features here to look at on our occipital bone. The big hole here is called the foramen magnum, which means big hole. These two round, smooth articulations here there, there. Those are occipital condyles. Condyle means knuckle. And, and these are smooth, rounded articulations where the skull will articulate with the first vertebrae. Occipital condyle. That hole, just superior to that occipital condyle, is called the hypoglossal canal. Sometimes it's called the hypoglossal foramen. Either term is correct. So that hole, and again, one on either side, the hypoglossal canal. This is where the hypoglossal nerve will leave the brainstem and travel to where it's going to go at the tongue. Hypoglossal canal. Occipital bone. Foramen magnum. Occipital condyles. Hypoglossal canal. Moving on. So here, we look at the front of the skull. In the front, right here, on top of the nose. Nasal bones. One, two nasal bones. If we remove them from the skull... They're nearly unidentifiable. That's a nasal bone. Here. So for our purposes in this course, you will only be asked to identify the nasal bone when it is articulated in the skull as such. The same is true for this tiny bone that's just inside the eye socket right here. And you can see that tiny little hole right there. This bone that sits right inside the eye socket there it's the lacrimal bone. And you can sort of see the outline of its sutures right there. So it's a very small bone right there. Lacrimal bone. Again, you'll only be asked to identify that structure on the intact skull. Now, 
You can see inside the eye sockets there, the back of the eye sockets. And this bone that sits inside the skull right here. This is called the sphenoid bone. Now the sphenoid bone is one of these bones that has more structure than many of the other bones on our list of terms does. There's lots of holes in the sphenoid bone where blood vessels and nerves pass through. So parts of the sphenoid bone that we need. The big part that's down here is called the greater wing. And the smaller part that's up here is the lesser wing. Lesser wing, greater wing. Now the two lesser wings meet here in the middle, and we have this odd-looking structure right here that's called the cella tersica. Cella tersica means Turkish saddle. I don't know why that means that. Evidently, it looks like a Turkish saddle. We see these small holes that go out here and here on either side of that cella tersica. They are going to come out on the other side in the eye socket. That is the optic canal, either one. Sometimes called the optic foramen. Again, those terms are interchangeable. Optic canal on either side. If we drop down just inferior to that optic canal, we see this big, long slit right there. The elongated fissure there is called the superior orbital fissure. Superior because it's on top right here. Fissure because it's an elongated hole. Orbital because it comes out in the orbit. So that elongated hole, just inferior to the optic foramen or optic canal, is the superior orbital fissure. Just inferior to that, you'll see this perfectly round hole right here. That round hole is the foramen rotundum, which means round hole. Past that, it's this oval-shaped hole, which is the foramen ovale, which means oval hole. And just past that is that little small hole right there, and that's the foramen spinosum. So, in order, optic foramen, superior orbital fissure, foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum. Now you're wondering what this very large hole right there that goes straight down is. That's called the foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum is not a hole in the sphenoid bone. Rather, it is a hole between the sphenoid bone and the temporal bone. You can only see the foramen lacerum if the skull is intact. Again, if we take the skull apart, you can't see it. The same is true for this other large hole right here beside the foramen magnum that oddly shaped hole right here. It's called the jugular foramen. Jugular foramen. Big, weird-shaped hole. And like the foramen lacerum, it is not a hole in the bone, but a hole between the bones. In this case, a hole between the temporal bone and the occipital bone. Now, the temporal bone is this bone on the side of the head where we see the hole for your ear. So let's look at the temporal bone. If we take the temporal bone off the skull, it looks like this. Now, this big, thin, flat piece up here is called the squamous region. Scale-like. It looks like a fish scale. The big, heavy, bulky part back here is the petrous region. Petrous, think petrified, like a rock. It's, it's heavy, rocky back here. This little ribbon of bone that sticks out to the side, it's called the zygomatic process. It's called the zygomatic process because it's going to touch the zygomatic bone here. Zygomatic process. The hole for your ear is called the external auditory meatus. A meatus is a hole that doesn't go all the way through. Behind that is the mastoid process. You can actually feel your mastoid process just behind your ear on your own head. It's that bump right behind your ear. The pointy thing that points straight down is the styloid process. 
mastoid process, styloid process, external auditory meatus, zygomatic process, squamous region, petrous region. Right here, there's a smooth indentation, and this is where the jaw will articulate. This is the mandibular fossa. A fossa is a smooth indentation, usually for the articulation of a joint. So here is the mandibular fossa. Any smooth indentation is typically called a fossa. We skipped over another one in the sphenoid bone that's not for a joint. It's called the hypophyseal fossa. But this is the mandibular fossa. If we take the mandible, it sits here. Like so. Mandibular fossa. Here again is our mastoid process. Pointy thing is our styloid process. And you can see there's a hole, that round hole in between the two things. That round hole is the stylomastoid foramen because it's between the styloid and the mastoid. So stylomastoid foramen is that round hole. If we look on the inside of this bone, we can see this hole. Again, it doesn't go all the way through. It's called the internal auditory meatus. This is the inside ear hole. If we go straight across from the external, you'll see that it's a straight shot in th across there. The only hole that you can really see all the way through on the temporal bone is this one, and that hole is called the carotid canal. So if you can see all the way through it, carotid canal. The same is true here. We can see that carotid canal right here and all the way through to the table just beside that big foramen lacerum carotid canal so temporal bone now like I said the temporal bone touches the zygomatic bone which is right here the zygomatic bone when we take it out looks like this the little pointy part of the zygomatic bone that touches the temporal bone, it's called the temporal process. This flat part that acts like a shelf for your eye socket is the orbital surface of the zygomatic bone. So there is a zygomatic bone. Now, look in the nose. We see this bone right here that divides the nose. It's the lower part of the nasal septum right here. It's called the vomer. And then up at the top, we can see part of this bone, which sits in the middle right there. Now, this bone is called the ethmoid bone. If you see pictures of an artificial ethmoid bone, it doesn't look like it belongs because it's just a chunk of plastic. If you see pictures of a real ethmoid bone, it's a bunch of very thin sheets of bone with hollow air cavities in it. All we can see of the ethmoid bone looking down in the skull right now is this surface that has lots of tiny little holes in it. That's called the cribiform plate. Cribiform means sieve-like. And this thing that sticks up right there, that's called the Christagaly. Christagaly means rooster's crest. So there is what we can see of the ethmoid bone. All right, let's flip this thing over. So here we see the roof of your mouth, your teeth. Obviously, you don't have a spring in your mouth. But at the very back of the roof of the mouth, we have these bones. And you can see the sutures for those bones right there. One, two bones. We take them out of the skull. They look like this. This is the palatine bone. It sits right here at the back of the hard palate. Palatine bone. Also here, we can see the bottom of the sphenoid bone. These two things right here are the underside of that sphenoid bone, and these are called pterygoid processes. Pterygoid starts with a P.
like pterodactyl. Pterygoid processes right here. So now we're looking at the roof of the mouth. The roof of the mouth and the structures above it are all part of the maxillary bone, or the maxilla. Now we have this part that stands up here. It's going to touch the frontal bone. That's the frontal process. We have this wavy ridge right here. That's called the alveolar margin. It's where the teeth are socketed in. If we flip it over, you can see this giant hollow cavity. That's the maxillary sinus. And then here we see the palatine process of the maxilla. So the palatine process of the maxilla is going to touch the palatine bone. Like so. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. You'll have to bear with me. You try to hold a phone with one hand and juggle bones with the other. Yeah. There you go. Palatine bone, palatine process. Make sure that you check the list here with that palatine process. Palatine, not Palestine or Palpatine. Palestine is a place. Palpatine is the emperor in Star Wars. I get both of those and every time I laugh about it. Maxillary bone. All right. Mandible. The jaw. All right. The body of the mandibles, for our purposes, right here, the chin. Goes around, meets this little flat region back here. The flat region back here is called the ramus. We've got this little spiky part right there, and this little brown part back here. Coronoid process. Condyle. Mandibular condyle. Coronoid process. Ramus. Body. Now, where the body turns and meets the ramus, you get this angle back here, and that's called the angle. Just like on the maxilla, this wavy ridge is the alveolar margin. Mandible. Now, the question that often comes up is, what are these holes? Well, not on your list of terms, so not something you're going to be tested over. This is the supraorbital notch, or supraorbital foramen. This is the infraorbital foramen. And this is the mental foramen. This is where nerves pass out to your face so that you can feel your face. Also not on your list, so not part of your exam, are these structures. These are the nasal concha. These are the middle nasal concha. But again, not on your list. What is on your list of terms that you need are four of the sutures. Now, sutures are the joints here for the skull bones. And there are four of them that you need. If I can assemble my quality skull model. I can't. Hold tight. There we go. All right. So, coronal suture. Corona, crown. Oh, that's why there's a crown on that beer. I hear you say. Coronal suture. Sagittal suture. Because it's on the sagittal plane. Lambdoidal suture. On the back of the head. Because it looks like the Greek letter lambda. Squamous suture. On the side of the head. So, there's your skull anatomy. 